Baldur's Gate 3 is an awesome game, but also there is a lot of classes in this game. While having good or even best builds for different classes like fighter, maybe a rogue, or even monk who is maybe most broken class in the game right now, you can deal with all difficulties. But how to make a really balanced and optimized party? That's what we are talking about today. When you're trying to make a really optimized party, you need to think about all difficulties you will face, and also how you will distribute all gear among your party. To make a really balanced party, you need four roles. Talker, Explorer, Guy with Big Eye, and Titan. And first one is Talker. Okay, when you're exploring game and talking with different characters, you will be prompted with different skill checks. And most common one is Deception or Intimidation. Both of these checks is charisma based. So you want a really high charisma character as your Talker. Most of the time it will be your main character. And there is four classes who can succeed in this role. Bard, Paladin, Warlock and Sorcerer. Also you can have a rogue with high charisma, because rogue need only constitution and dexterity. But still you will lose on your proficiency, because Bard, Paladin, Warlock and Sorcerer will have bonus proficiency to charisma checks. Next role is Explorer. It could be Monk, a Ranger or a Rogue. Main skill for your explorer in the party is Sleight of Hand. Sleight of Hand will give you ability to pick locks, pockets and disarm traps. So if you're in a dungeon with a lot of traps, you definitely need someone like Rogue in your party. So next role is Guy with Big Eye and it will be any Wisdom character. So it could be Cleric, Druid or Ranger. Again, some roles can be mixed up. But for really balanced party, I recommend going with Druid or Cleric. So what we get from Wisdom? Most importantly, we get high perception. And perception checks uh, let you spot hidden details. Whenever there is secret entrance to dungeon or maybe secret doors, guys with high Wisdom will notice it. And last but not least, Titan. You need some powerful character with high strength. It could be Barbarian, Fighter, some builds with Monk, Paladin or even Ranger sometime. Main idea of powerful strength based character is to be able to jump to high places and carry some weight. If your party consists only on, of dexterity and mage based characters you will have low strength, you won't be able to pick up some chests, maybe you need to steal some chests to pick it to your camp and then open them. So strength based character is really important for really balanced party. And now I will give you builds and real examples for nice and optimized parties. Because you need to think not only how they will perform on exploration, but also how they will perform in combat. In combat we need to think about three things. Burst, zone control and supportive abilities. My main character is Warlock. So for exploration part he is Talker. And in combat he can be zone controller or burster. This time I decided to go with Cantrip Eldritch Blast build. So I got Agonizing Blast and Repelling Blast. And most of spells I'm picking is mostly single target. While we still can pick something like Hunger of Hader for zone control, for this type of character it's better to just go with something like Scorching Ray and maybe something like Fireball just in case. Also to make complete burster I will go with Devil Sight so I can stay in the darkness. And while I have some spells just in case I need some AoE damage like Lightning, Fireball, Hunger of Hater, most of the time we will be using Eldritch Blast to destroy single targets. And enemies that get high health pool will be destroyed in seconds. Because we can't rely on Fireball too much thanks to our limited spell slots from Warlock. For my explorer in the party I took Monk. And this is Tyron basically using build from my Karlak best build video. He is my explorer, but also Monk is very nice burster. So we got melee range burster and range burster. Having different range characters in your party is very nice for optimization. Now let's switch to our controller. It will be Gale. And I will build him as cleric. We already got charisma based character and dexterity based character. So we need guy with big eye and some zone controller in a party. Cleric will fit nicely. Coolest part that clerics got a lot of different subclass choices. A life, light and trickery domain will be domains of supportive clerics. 
knowledge is just weak cleric in my opinion nature domain is really nice supportive and zone controlling cleric and tempest domain is zone controlling cleric too also i forget about one more class you need in a party a really balanced and optimized one mid shield so borrow domain cleric can be your mid shield party member too as well as supportive class so clerics always fill few roles and because two of my party members who is bursters right now got light armor proficiency i need cleric who is supportive and also can wear something like medium armor but at the same time can zone control so light domain cleric is really nice pick for this light domain cleric got nice supportive abilities like warding flare but also a lot of zone controlling ones like burning hands and other fire spells so cleric feels a really nice supportive role in this party we can cast eight and give our party additional health points that's really cool stuff at the same time we can use hero's fist to gain camp supplies and increase our health even more in case of danger we can use mass healing ward and heal all our teammates also with the right build you will give every teammate blade ward and bless so you can have great build for this type of cleric in description and in pinned comment of course and to zone control we have wall of fire just in case we need to cut down enemies from coming from different sides make it harder for them same can be achieved with insect lake so just put it on your enemies and this will zone control some different areas where you don't want to go with your party maybe you want to stop enemies from some place and this type of cleric can be really tanky so we can just be in the front lane and have something like spirit guardians on us this will make little zone control too around us zone controlling is really important but also nice part about this cleric is his uh, multi-target abilities most of the time it's kind of same abilities that uses zone control while burst characters like this warlock can be really scary and easily destroy targets just in one turn and by easily i am really meaning easily when you're facing a lot of targets at the same time it can be really hard and that's where zone controlling guys like this cleric will come just turn on your spirit guardians this will damage enemies around you and also you can use radiance of dawn very powerful spell to d10 plus 12 radiant damage in a really large area around you this will save up a lot of time and resource for your bursting characters so they can really burst down strong enemies and not just uh, basic and useless corrupts and what's about our last party slot this should be our mid shield and this character should round up and balance our party we already got two bursters we got some zone control and supportive stuff from cleric so for our mid shield it could be a ranger fighter or barbarian and most of the time barbarian won't fill this slot barbarian is nice mid shield but also very nice burster while having almost zero zone control at the same time ranger can have all of our needs also paladin can be really nice mid shield at the same time and basically we need character with heavy armor that's why barbarian is not good for our party right now so warlock will use our light armor that used by mages monk will use just light armor that used by normal armor users or even just close not armor at all cleric will be proficient in medium armor and all we need is some heavy armor user and for mid shield i will go with fighter a lot of players will try to go with great weapon fighting just to increase damage with output that's a nice idea when you're trying to build max damage on one character but when you build a mid shield go for defense we can dump our dexterity get maximum strength a lot of constitution and we got this big and powerful character and because my party lacks of zone control i will make this fighter zone controlling fighter to balance out and optimize my party so it will be battle master with maneuvers that can make enemies stuck in one place or mess up their position it will be pushing attack menacing attack and precision just in case we need high hit chance on later levels i will go with disarming and trip attack for feet of choices it will be sentinel to make enemies stuck in place when we hit them with the reaction and also pull arm master so we can stay in one place and hit enemies over there 
So this party in action. First of all, look at our stats and health. That's incredible, we are super powerful, almost raid boss-like characters. If you know that fight won't be skipped and you will fight anyway, then definitely you can go in with your melee characters first. So it could be your fighter and your monk and probably even cleric. But cleric in this party is zone controller, so he should be somewhere in between. But let's say you play normally and you going in, trying to get some information and just to talk out yourself, out of different situations. Looks like we can't talk out ourselves from this situation. And that's how good optimized party works. First of all, analyze battlefield. Can you get advantageous positions over here? Advantageous positions is high ground that is really hard to access. That's one of these positions. So this lady on a high ground, it's hard to get to her. And that's position we want to take. But if it's impossible to get good position in a fight on the battlefield, try to make a different battlefield for yourself. So we can back off instead and take zone control in this choke point. That's one of the really powerful strategies too. Let me show you how both of them works. To make a good place, always look at initiative roles and try to get out of there anyone between your characters. So these two guys is our weak links right now and we will focus them down. I'm using Mr. Tap to get to the high ground. Nice, strong and powerful position. Now looking at my target. That's exactly this lady on good position. So I can get to her back and use my Eldritch Blast. This will push her down and possibly even kill her. No, we got counter spelled. That's why also is nice to mix your damage types. If you're counting only on spells, it can be really hard to do damage when there's a lot of mages who can counter spell you. Now it's still watch her turn. He goes to my party. And this lady trying to hit but misses two times in a row. It's time to turn with our monk. He is maimed, so he can't move right now. If he can move, I would go and try to kill the Steel Watcher. Monk is burst character, so we need to find out characters with the most amount of HP and burst them down. Because I can't move, I will try to defeat this guy instead. As you can see, it's easy to burst down characters with Monk. Next turn from our cleric, and I want to be zone controller for my burst mage. So I'm turning on my spirit guardians, trying to damage the steel watcher and then using misty step to teleport to position that I will be controlling. That's a nice one. And to give enemies disadvantage on range attacks against me, I will stay on a high ground. This guy just made jump. That's why not every high ground is equal. And that's why having only one zone control is not enough most of the time. My fighter who is mid shield acting last. That's very nice, because now we can find out and decide what is best position for this character on battlefield. And considering enemies is already flooding my high ground, I need to zone control this area instead. So instead of just trying to kill this steel watcher, because position is a kink, I'm using dash and jumping on a high ground myself. By using big halberd or any type of spear, I can stand over here and defend in zone, so I'm zone controller at the same time. As you can see, radius of uh, high reach weapons is really high. Also, we get nice zone control tools like pushing attack, so we can push down this target from the high ground, and that's really cool interactions you can do. But also we're doing nice damage and can definitely defeat targets even by our other moves. For example, menacing attack is really useful stuff too. We will frighten this target on the high ground right now and he won't be able to use reactions. Also, he will be stuck in place because we use and pull our master and this will make easier for our mage to run to the best position. And now from the good position we can really use spells to destroy our enemies and burst them down. No more counter spells, lady. It's finally our monk turn, he is melee burster, so we need to find targets with high amount of HP and try to burst them down. Never forget what is your character's roles. While it's really tempting to go with this cleric all in and damage everyone with spirit guardians, our role to zone control, so always try to plan your pass to maybe damage some targets, but also get back to your mage or who you are controlling in. Maybe you're controlling some choke point or other places. 
and by controlling areas enemies will clamp in these areas in these zones and you can utilize your area of effect abilities like this to damage everyone inside oh enemy comes into sight and he instantly damaged because we zone controlling this area also again they clumped up so now we can use cliff with our battle master and damage multiple targets at the same time or just try to manage them so they will be stuck in a place he is frightened now this lady should be frightened too and also never forget your pole arm bonus action for additional damage and we just missed that's why it's important to keep your zone control in this way you will save a lot of resources and won't ever be damaged most of the time focus down enemies with your burst damage characters and never let guys to threaten them and always in case you're in danger if you got some supportive characters so you can heal your whole body and they will be in a safe zone also as you can see i'm used insect plague because we get this entrance over here maybe enemies will come from this door so that's nice zone controlling tool again and instead of placing yourself in defensive positions you can be in offensive so we created really dangerous zone over here now we can use our fighters and other guys just to stay nearby the zone and never let enemies get away from this place just using menacing attacks for example probably enemies will be frightened and stay over here but this guy is immune to frightening so instead we can just push him with eldritch blast and other stuff make sure to understand what enemies you are fighting now he's trying to get away from this zone but again, we can mess up his position a lot by other stuff like Elder Blast that can push targets in different zones. And now he is done. Easy. But also second version of this fight, we can just utilize this strong choke point in this area and zone control this place. So I'm getting back with my mage and using Hunger of Hader over here. This will make the zone almost inaccessible. And our mage is in safe place. Some targets is already here, but we don't care too much. We can just focus down easy targets with our Burster, who is also our Monk. And just get back with him a little bit to another position. Now it's Cleric time. Again, instead of just doing basic Cleric stuff, we can get back and use Insect Plague over here. Now it's really an accessible zone and really a very dangerous choke point. Let's see how enemies will react to this type of play. They trying to enter Hunger of Hader, creating elementals. Oh, Crusaders Mantle. And now it's time for our fighter, because we got really high range and heavy armor with Blade Wars, so we are protected from basic piercing damage. With our fighter, we can stay in Insect Plague, take some damage, we will be fine, and just control this zone, where every enemy will be blinded and we will have nice advantage against them. Or I can just go back and stay over here completely safely. Now it's our mage time, so I guess let's just use Eldritch Blast. Yeah, we got minus two to attack rolls from low ground, but still it's very strong choke point and we will push enemies away to the darkness. He trying to jump away, yeah, he can do it. But only most powerful enemies can jump away from these places. Still, we're not feared too much. We get more than enough damage to burst him down. and push him away so he will blow up himself over here also we need to make sure to stay outside of the archer range but with enough more speed to go in and fight so that's a nice place to stay with melee fighters same goes for cleric a little bit behind and this guy's taking a lot of damage trying to get to us it's hard terrain almost impossible for them to pass they're just dashing into a lot of damage oh my goodness <laughs> it's so hard for them so this guy is almost out of this dangerous zone. We're just going in, damaging him a few times. We can even use some like battle master attacks and jump back to safety. And last but not least, our awesome mage pushing different targets away so they're not coming to us and maybe even destroying them. Oh no, we got counter spell over here again. So I'm just running back and staying in safety. Now Archer is in darkness, so she can't attack us. That's really powerful and strong position. And while we can get in, that's not important. We can just skip a few turns and give enemies what they want. 
So they will try to go through this really difficult terrain, jump out and be met with our melee characters. With Polar Master, Sentinel, basically a lot of controlling stuff. That's how powerful zone control is. Almost impossible to pass these places. Just don't be scared to skip a turn from time to time. And again, we're pushing enemies away from this place. So they will be stuck. And I don't even need to <laughs> do anything with my monk for now. Same for Cleric. Cleric used a mass healing ward already three times. That's crazy. Strongest guys trying to get out. But we got a lot of protective stuff. And now just destroying them. Pretty easily with other characters. Pushing them. And everyone was going away again. Getting destroyed by my monk and fighter and warlock. In case you're ready to do some damage, just go in and use Radiance of Dawn, for example. Make sure to get back to safety. And after most enemies is defeated, we can go in with other characters. So I'm going in on enemy mage with my fighter, using my reaction to easily kick this enemy. And we can even turn off this concentration spell and go in safely. With Light Domain Cleric, we got Fireball to finish down really low targets. Oh, where are you going? So this fight, I literally took zero damage with completely balanced and optimized party. This party is super powerful and optimized. For full build for each character, look into description and pin comment. And see you in the next videos.